somebody on Twitter basically said I was, I think, full of shit about uh, Social Security. And there's no uh, faster way than to me to invite somebody on to uh, the show to call in. I think this is them. 916 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm Ayman from the Table Bonus Podcast. And yes, I did say you were full of shit. Okay, so it is that guy. All right. Um, yeah. Do we have the? Do we have your tweet? Do we? Have, do we have that? Uh, that clip? Um. Well, I, we're gonna we're gonna we'll we'll play the clip so that we can start this. But uh, I invited you to call in uh, to you know uh, to to discuss this. Do you have it? It should be on my. Uh, I I responded to him at one point. I don't know when it was. Sometime yeah, the other you did. day. I was really surprised, actually. Really, really surprised that you did. Uh, well, you know, you know, just to give you credit. Oh, well, like, thank you. you. I appreciate you, that. It's the it's the quickest way yeah. to uh, to to uh, wind your way into my heart is uh, to uh, <laughs> criticize me and then uh, to do it about uh, Social Security. That's that's like honestly, that's like a catnip. All right, here it is. Uh, here is uh, the the tweet that uh, uh, caused me to invite you to call in and and have this conversation. Sam Cedar and Patrick Fred David debate about private enterprise versus government. And Sam makes the case that Social Security eliminated the risk of poverty for our senior citizens. What this f***ing idiot is missing. Do you know what the average life expectancy was when Social Security was first enacted? 65 years old. That's right, motherfuckers. This thing was never designed to serve as many people as it does because the government stupidly did not expect the life expectancy of their own citizens to increase by 20 years. That's why this thing won't work. On top of that, it doesn't account for the population decline who are paying into the system that's serving more people who are retired than enough people who are working to pay for it. On top of that, Sam Cedar compares 401ks versus Social Security conveniently forgets to mention that people who are paying into the 401k are also paying for Social Security. That's 6.2% coming out of your paycheck. It's like investing for your future with a hand tied behind your back. And he calls this a success. Sam Cedar. And okay, Pat so there it is. So what, uh, what's your name? Yeah, I sound great. You sound great. My name is Simon. Uh, Simon? Yeah. Simon? Simon. A-Y. Iman. Oh, Iman. 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 Okay. So, Iman, let's yeah. let's go through this uh, uh, one by one. Yeah. Um, you say I said it eliminated the risk of poverty. No, I think what I said was at the time it got two thirds of our elderly out of poverty, and mm -hmm. I th I think uh, right now you'll find that like somewhere around thirty. Uh, I think the numbers are thirty percent of people would be in poverty. Never mind. You know, living close to poverty, the rest would be very, uh, well, not the rest, but uh, a, a huge another cohort would be very close. But at least 30% would be living in poverty were it not for Social Security. Do you have a problem with that uh, um, a fact or, or you just don't think it's important? No, no, no. No one has a problem with people not living in poverty, which I think is the argument that usually is used against Republicans, like they're heartless or whatever. The fact is, this program was never designed to operate into the future this way. Well, wait, 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 but, but wait, let's just, I, we're going to get to there. Cause I got, I got, I got the average life expectancy and et cetera, et cetera. And population yeah. uh, decline. And, uh, but I just, in terms of like, you brought up that it, that it, you said it, I said it eliminates the risk of poverty. It doesn't eliminate it, but it, it, well, it does actually eliminate the risk of poverty for all but 9%. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it eliminates the risk of poverty, it, it, but it directly keeps at least 30% out of poverty. You accept that fact, correct or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so totally. you don't have an issue with that. Um, it, it, Nobody it, has an issue with that. Okay. So we, we can agree that at the very least, it keeps 30% of elderly out of poverty. It's about another 30% that it keeps just living above, you know, poverty. And I think you would also agree, in addition, that diminishes pressure on people's kids to worry about their parents and, 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 and helps them in terms of their uh, wealth or in, uh, wealth, essentially. I mean, so mm -hmm. are we in agreement on that? Yeah. Okay. So let's move to average life expectancy. Now, you say the government didn't realize that life expectancy would grow, even though, I mean, that, I don't know why you make that assumption. They 
they had actuarial tables at the time. They knew that life expectancy had grown from 1900 to 1940. Um, what's what's the point about just let's go with life expectancy? Okay, so at the time, it's easy to pass legislation like this when you don't factor in what's going to happen over time. And you can say they have actuarial tables, but we know how congressmen and senators are. They're not factoring that in. It's about the near future instead of the long-term future. And so that's why we have the problem now. It's because the math isn't going to work out for the way the population is. What is and the so problem? Why, what is the problem now? There aren't enough workers, and there are way, way more people retired than this program can support. And oh. we know this. The calculations are very clear. Okay. It's just a math problem. Okay. It's a math problem. All right. Well, first off, let's just start with like, what's the problem? In other words, like uh, you're saying that we have a problem because the worker to retiree ratio, and, and we'll get to that. But what is the problem that you're saying? Like, what is like when you say there's a problem, I, I get that you're talking about worker uh, to, to employee ratio, and we can discuss that. It certainly has changed. Um, what is the problem, though? Does that make Social Security People, bad, or did, are you trying to argue that it's not I'm sustainable? Not it's, bad. it's not sustainable. Okay. That's the argument I'm making. And Whoa. giving people the false sense that this is something that they can rely on into the future is going to set people up for failure. Okay. And I think it's important to tell people now that I, I mean, probably okay. anyone under 40 are you aware probably of, shouldn't expect it the same way. Okay, what should they expect? If I'm under 40 and the U.S. government does nothing, what should they expect in terms of benefits? They have to start planning now. No, no, and no. And also, I, think, I know, I know, they have to what? start planning now. What should they yeah. expect in terms of benefits from Social Security? I think to be safe, they should expect to not have the same sort of Social Security benefits that their parents. What do you mean by have. same sort Probably of? We know, reducely. we know exactly what the number is. I mean, surely no, if you're, wait, wait, we know if, Amen, it's Amen, go into that. Amen, Amen, you're on Twitter saying, what was the first yeah. part of that? I'm a fucking idiot because yeah, I don't understand idiot. about social security. Now you tell me you're giving people the what, false impression I, no, no, this no, is a no, 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 work. you tell us it the true impression. Work. You tell us the true impression. How much, if I'm 40 today and the U S government yeah. does nothing, nothing to reform social security taxes, let's say, or cut, they do nothing. How much can I expect? And at what age can I expect it? You're the genius on this. You tell me. It depends on the age that there are, they are and how much they're saving. They're 40 but years old. Right no, now, no, 40 years old. They're going for social security. How much of their benefits can they expect when they retire? And at what age is full retirement for a 40 year old today? To be safe, to be safe. No, no, don't say be safe. Just exist. tell me no, no, if no, they no. do nothing. We're making predictions about the future, dude. We're making predictions about the future. I'm telling you the math says there, it will become insolvent. It will become insolvent. You're saying People that social security that. will be insolvent. They will get zero benefits if they, if they uh, retire. There is a possibility of that. There is a possibility of that? A possibility of that. Are you yeah. including that possibility that a massive meteor hits the, uh, the planet and we all die? Or have you not even no, looked I'm at the Social it's Security the report it's the math. that will tell you, you the about, math you is... The, trust the math you is... The, trust the, the math... The government can always print more money. The math... The government can always the, print more money. The, no, no. That's what they don't saying. have to you're print... You're to predict what the government's going to do. No. You're saying doing exactly nothing. No. They will become okay. insolvent. That you know what you're doing, Eamon? You're showing everybody that you haven't even read the Social Security report. I did. Really? Then tell me what they, what they say benefits will be if I'm, I'm 40. I'm going to read it for verbatim for you, dude. Oh, I'm you know, you, there's the one number that is important. 80%. If the government does nothing, a 40-year-old who retires at full retirement will get 80% of benefits. If we do nothing, nothing. Now, you don't understand what I'm saying because you don't know what you're talking about. Now, tell me what age, what age does a 40-year-old what age does a 40-year-old retire at? Full retirement benefits. If I'm 40 today, how old do I have to be to fully retire? Dude, how old? This ain't a fucking... How old? This ain't a quiz, dude. 
No, it talking, even, I want to talk about solutions for the future. Well, you don't know I, what the problem I, I, is. There are ways we can actually. You don't even know what the problem is. You don't know what I the full the retirement problem. age now is work. for a forty-year-old. So work for people in the future. How do you know that the math's not going to work if you don't know the numbers that Sam is referencing? Look at the fucking tables. Look at the trust fund. It's clear the numbers all don't work. It's good now, you brought the up the trust fund. Can, yes, the trust fund is going to be up. at 0%, but the way the program works, 80% of benefits are going to be paid. What age, who has looked at the trust fund and all the tables, what age is full retirement for a 40-year-old today? I'm looking at the future. I want, I'm looking at solutions for the future. And it's you know how be, you answer that question, be, Eamon? Let me help you out. I don't have know, to get Sam. Out of the way and allow us to build the technology. I don't even know live where, what the full retirement age is. Okay, so let's move on to your next thing. It's 67. When was it raised, Eamon? Why is it that as a 56-year-old? I think it was 1980-something. Yeah, 1981. And what did the government do? What do you mean? What did the government do in 1981? There was a big reform to Social Security. What did they do then? Dude, what, you want me to read the fucking paper for you? No, I know the answer. I know hey, the answer. I'm talking about the future, dude. I'm talking about the future. <laughs> oh, the Matt, future. All right, dude. Listen. Um, so, dude, let's talk what? about the other I'm issue. I'm talking about technology, have. man. Yeah, no, I know I'm you're talking, talking about, about technology. technology. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know yeah. what? I want you should, old people you should develop to be a machine. able to have the kind of lives that they deserve. You should and develop you a machine about, like, that can read number, the Social Security Trust Fund report to you. Uh, that's the first thing you should do with the future with your technology. No, I should, but I should build to... machines that help reduce medical costs so this could all be affordable for everybody. Great. This is the problem. You're focused on the numbers instead of the actual thing that needs to be fixed. Wait, wait. Didn't you start this by telling me it was about math? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the math for this won't work out. We have to focus on other ways. People my age and younger have to expect we're not going to have the same social security benefits. This You're going to have 80% for our if, future. Listen, dude, you, you keep now, talking. Like, now, go uh, let's go, go on ahead. to your next issue. Uh, the government did not expect. Now you're going back in the past, which you had a problem with me talking about 1981 when this deal where they expected exactly everything you're talking about in fact they expected this before then you can see that the social security was tweaked all along the way but in 1981 we were aware of the baby boom we were aware of things like there's going to be x yeah, number of nice. workers and there's going to be a lot of, of money it was a beautiful thing in that time until things flipped the other way okay now That's flip the, the other way your, your big uh, uh contribution to this is that there is a different ratio of workers to uh, retirees. Is that correct? Yeah. When was the biggest change in that ratio? Because right now... It doesn't matter when. I know what it is now. I don't know what it was. What is it now? Three. Three Three to one. Three to one. And what's it projected to be in terms of workers to retirees by 19... Let's say uh, 2050. Uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, you imagine it's going to be a problem, right? It's already too low. Okay, That's it's already too low. What was it when Social Security started? 40. 42, I think it was. Dude, why are you quizzing me on fucking numbers, man? Because Let's you keep talk talking about, about math. This what was the biggest change? Do you remember what happened you in 1950? All this negativity. Like, hey, let's tax more. Let's tax more. Let's talk about... No, no. I, I, when I talk about tax more... lifestyle changes. When I talk about... I want people to live the lives that they deserve in old age. And here you are. Just focus on stupid shit. Wait, you this said that I'm you have about. a, this is why a company? A you medical know, device I do a company? Podcast. No, I okay, no, listen, I'm not care. I don't care about, about your podcast. I, I let you on, I let you on a much bigger incentive. podcast. Talk about politics. Because 18 of this to shit. 1 because of this in 1950. You on the negativity, uh, and you don't focus on solutions for the future. Okay. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Oh, oh you want in. solutions for the future? Raise the cap. Yeah, I and heard, I listened to you talk about raising the cap. Yeah, yeah, so okay, you want to calm down for a second. Hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, buddy, listen. I invited you on here to talk about your your video that you posted yeah it's very jump cutty i'm giving you the opportunity to yep. do it now like in real time from 1950 to 1961 five we had the biggest change in the ratio of worker to retiree that we have ever experienced 
And that went from 18 to 1 in, in 1950, because from 1936 to 1950, uh, it, it also diminished greatly. But that big part of that was uh, it was the beginning of the of the of the program. Um, 18 to 1 in 1950, 4 to 1 in 1965. And do you know what happened to Social yeah. Security in 1965? Shit you talked about. You know what happened in 1965? Do you know what happened in 1965? Go ahead. To Social Security? Nothing. Now, why is that? I'm going to explain something to you. It's called increase in productivity. As each worker yeah. becomes more productive and creates more activity in terms of and increases the GDP, more money goes into the coffers of Social Security to pay for current retirees. So the reason why Social Security has not collapsed, even though there has been a, I don't even know how to express it in like multiples of a diminishment in that ratio between workers and retirees much larger than we are going to experience in the next 50 or 60 years is because of increases in productivity which is why even Until, if we do nothing even if we do nothing you're not even anticipating automation it, you're not even anticipating automation there will be no workers eventually do you understand that uh, like that's the problem with all this like future prediction shit. It can go one way, it can go another way. There's going to be I'm, no workers. I'm thinking about a way. I'm thinking about a way for this to work for everybody. Hey, you know, and dude, we've been hearing about automation. People's lifestyles. We've been hearing about automation taking away workers jobs for I don't Ever. know 15 20 years no and more more and 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 chat GPT oh chat GPT. oh chat GPT you... oh oh right, right the well, glorified uh, autocorrect I mean, right, dude, I mean listen, that's going to change listen, everything listen, listen, bro. listen I know I know <laughs> that it's job. impossible to predict the future 20 years out by looking at actuarial tables and assessing how what the uh, the no trust is. but but and guess what? But, how but, it changed the, the solvency of Social Security, which I don't even want to talk about because it's kind of morbid. Yeah, but it helped. There me. are things that but, will happen but, in the future that we won't know. I want to. But you're I, talking I, to I, me about, about automation and how Chat GPT is going to make there be no workers. If jobs are automated away. There and, are no people but, to pass. Dude, Do you see the problem why there? is it that my looking into the future on all of these math you questions? is about sort of, of human fantastical to, but you saying you that we're going to be automated out of workers, workers is the, human workers don't the basis of your argument you just made the case i dude I, come on now listen here's the bottom line this is why uh, it's like the focus on i don't know technology is the only way to ensure the lifestyle that our retirees deserve you know what? It. I am perfectly fine with you going out and inventing whatever machine you want to invent. In the I'll meantime, to, yeah. in the to. meantime, we are taking in five to seven percent less in national income via Social Security taxes uh, because of wealth disparity in this country. And if we raise the cap on who has to pay Social Security taxes, the trust fund will. Uh, insolvency in 3033 or whatever it's 3034 3032 is irrelevant we will do you know why the cap exists uh i suspect it's because wealthy people didn't want to pay above that uh, level no no it's because the idea was it's a social program to help retirees that you pay into with the expectation that you pull out if there's a cap on how much you can pull out there should be a cap on how much you put in that's the whole point. You want to change it into a wealth redistribution program? Convince congressmen to do that. Go oh, ahead. Uh, I try, we'll try to do that. That's what but I'm trying to do. it won't happen. So I'm thinking. Well, what is the what idiot part of, I'm just curious. Why am I a fucking idiot for understanding that and wanting to pressure politicians to remove the cap so that people can we can keep at least 30 percent out of poverty and then another 30 percent from living right on the edge of poverty and all the sort of like downstream implications of that in terms of other people? Why is that idiotic? As opposed to you You're wanting asking, to invent a machine yeah, that's going to make it idiotic. easier for you. You're expecting politicians to reform something. Like they did in Something 1981. That was never to be, like they did in 1981. It was to be a wealth redistribution program. It was yeah, yes. never that. 
You're asking them to change it into something. And you got to get hey, both dude. sides of the political hey, aisle dude, to do dude, that. Dude. You think that's going to actually work? Do you know how that's many people, problem with your thinking. You know how many people make it's money? All just talk. If you're worried about the wealth redistribution, let's just do it. We'll do it. We'll, 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 we'll put in a donut. Hole. I don't mind it. How's that? I don't mind it. But I don't think you can get it to happen because th- the way our government works, you can yell, you can complain, you can have your show and complain about all this stuff. But, but wait a second. I'm talking about so, actual well, reality here. Okay, so okay. Um, reality here, I'm going to give you two minutes, happen. two more minutes to tell us the actual reality of your solution to this. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So anyone under 40 should expect we're not going to get Social Security the same way our parents and grandparents have. Pause it, so pause it, pause it, pause it. it. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to restart the clock. I'm going to restart the clock. Come on, bro. Because I, uh, the premise in what you're saying, again, 80%. If you want to remind people, if you want to tell people information, not about your plan to, to fix this, but if you want to tell them right, about I'll the fall situation fall. now, you I'll need fall to fall. be accurate on my program. On your Twitter feed, okay. you can say whatever you want, but you got to say yeah. if government does nothing right now and you're 40, uh, 40 years old, you can expect only 80% of your Social Security benefits. All right, I'll reset the clock for you. Go ahead. Well, I said under 40, so that replies to you. Under 40, too, but... if you're of working yeah. age, whatever. Okay. So, <laughs> saying all that, so we should be anyone under 40 should be planning that you're not going to get as much. How about that? Is that cool? Sure. (laughs) All right. Two, I think the government has to get out of the way when it comes to technological innovation, especially in the medical field. Like, you know, the distribution of how much the government pays in Medicare and all that stuff. So that is way more expensive than it needs to be. And a lot of it is driven by regulation and big corporations who are probably in bed with government. So get out of the way so we can reduce the cost there. Also technology to, reduce the cost of housing and food production so that people can actually live good retired lives. And that, if we can do that through technology, then the actual dollar figure won't matter so much because everyone will be able to afford it. How do you do that? That's the way, that's the argument. Okay. Okay, well you did that in a minute. You did that in a minute, and I think that's pretty compelling. Government get out of the way so that medical costs go down. Of course, if uh, people will live longer there, but, the technological advances that you are talking about are going to make everything better. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how I could argue with that. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. I think we would agree on 60% of things and on the 40% we disagree. You know what? I was being so, facetious. It's just that I didn't think you would have right. said anything. I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't want you to, I don't want you to feel like Look, I, I mean, I just don't know how you better businessmen and I'm going to give it to them. All and right. Well, I, I wish you, you can talk all you want. You are. You, I hope you hate that politics you are, and you don't like how negative it is. Listen to the Table Moments podcast. We don't talk politics. Typically, that slipped up. My bad. Okay. I That's a good pitch call. to people Thank turning you. into a dry political podcast. They definitely will do that, sir. I appreciate the call. Um, <laughs> there it is, folks. Uh, it, I, I hope that as a business person, he is better than he is in sort of understanding broad policy uh, questions. God forbid argument. anyone considers him, you know, like, say, a fucking idiot or something like that. That's right. I mean, that was, uh, but it, it, understand, the, the, and I don't even know if he's aware that's what he's doing, but that whole libertarian business mindset, which is that, like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make an assertion about how things are going to get bad. I'm going to then depoliticize you by telling you that politics are stupid to talk about to expect politicians to help you out is folly and it's a waste of your time, which of course is completely depoliticizing. I, I, is it going to be a struggle to get uh, politicians to raise the cap and fund social security pol- uh, p- properly? Of course. But if you'd asked me 10 years ago, is it a struggle to keep uh, social security uh, politicians Democrats and Republicans, mostly uh, no, all Republicans, some Democrats from cutting Social Security benefits. I would have said that is going to be very hard, but that's where we are today. <laughs> and so the idea that these libertarian uh, 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 brainiacs. Part of either what their agenda is or what they're acting upon is this sense of depoliticization because they want the rest of you to feel like there is no point in demanding stuff 
from uh, from politicians or from government allow really wealthy business people to provide for you because that's in their interests. It's in his interest. Didn't he say that's that's what his line of work is? Uh, apparently medical technology yeah i um, mean that uh, just like yeah me- uh, medical technology is going to save us um, i mean we're not in the business of social security we're not making money off of social security and making these arguments you can make your judgment about what that guy's motives might be uh but it is also amazing too dude if you're gonna if like and, and it's not like you didn't have a, a, a two days to know this like go back and read the report be able to answer the two basic questions that your whole thing was premised on one that there's going to be no money in social security you, you, you shouldn't need me to tell you what the social security trust uh, report says trustees report says 80 uh, percent benefits and you should know if you're talking to 40 year olds what the retirement age is for 40 year olds because it's different than it is for me is in 1981 they made a deal that would raise the retirement age starting, I think it was in 2000, by a couple of months every year. Mm. And so by the time a 40-year-old retires, it's going to be 67 for full retirement. They've already raised the age. Yeah. And you should also know about all of your assumptions about productivity if you are saying that we go from three to one workers to two to one workers, and that's going to be a disaster, you need to be able to answer why it is that we went from 30 to one workers to three to one workers, and it wasn't a disaster. Like, just, you know, I invite you on the show, call in, I take you out of the thing. You didn't even, you didn't, you didn't even do any effort. Hmm. It's, a, it's, that's rude. It's rude. That's ruder than him calling you a fucking idiot? I mean, if you're going to call me a fucking idiot, at least back it up. That's yeah, all I'm saying. Yeah, maybe you just don't understand Show the, the effort. machines, you know? Show the effort. What's your love language? It doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, do your homework. <laughs> love language, doing homework. <laughs> right on. That's one of them, right? Yeah. Acts, acts of service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, acts of service. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Doing your partner's displays homework. Of affa- displays yep. of affection. Doing yeah, homework. exactly. <laughs> um... Uh, Adam from Indiana, I think we can infer that Eamon came on the show to stump for personal responsibility in regards to retirement savings. Personal responsibility should roll in tandem with a policy to create the best outcome. Advocating solely for personal responsibility with low taxes and Social Security is capitalist libertarian hell. His vision is people clambering over one another, buying rental properties and passive incoming food out of people's mouths. Um, I mean... We've run that experiment before. Yeah. That's why Social Security exists. We've run that experiment, and it didn't work out well. Mm. And if you look at the 401k savings rates, it is a failed experiment. For some people, it's good. But it turns out not everybody is, A, great at investing, B, great at saving on their own. And this is true. Uh, and the question is, as a society, should we say to someone who's 65 or 67 or 70 or 62, maybe they've been working as a doctor and they didn't save any money or whatever. They lost their shirt in the the stock market, or maybe they've been working like any or, um, you know, make an income like 50% of the people and never had an extra dollar or never had the opportunity to have a 401k. Maybe they were responsible with their money. Maybe they weren't. As a society, should we say to those people, sorry, dude. Yep. Cat food. Work it out better in the next life. Or do we create a social insurance program that makes sure it doesn't matter if you're dumb or smart, whether you're brilliant with money or you're an idiot with money, whether you're super buttoned up and responsible or if you just love to party or whatever it is. As a society, should we say, you know what? We're not going to be moralistic about this. Regardless of what type of human you are, assuming you're not out there hurting other people, in which case, you know, you may run afoul of the law. But if you're just a person, 
by the fact that you're a human being, we're going to determine as a society that we're going to create a policy that's going to make sure that you are going to be able to eat and you are going to be able to have housing. And we're going to, we're, we're going to morally judge you, but we're not going to do so in such a way. You know, we can do that in your homes. We can say that person's a real loser or bad, irresponsible or, you know, whatever it is you want to say. But as a human being, you deserve the right to be able to live however many years you have left after working your the majority of your life to live in a way to make sure that at the very least you're going to be able to eat you're going to be able to uh, pay for heat you're going to be able to live in your apartment maybe every now and then you'll be able to go out and see a movie or you're going to be able to pay for like cable television so you can watch a movie like that should be the absolute bare minimum as a society that we provide. And it really gets down to whether you believe that's the case or you don't. All the other stuff that they talk about is just absolute BS. There is a way for us to figure that out. Period. End of story. Political economy. That's the bottom line. We're making the decision. We made a decision during COVID that we weren't going to have as many children in poverty and like that, almost overnight, several months, we eliminated 40% of child poverty in this country. And then just as quick, we decided, yeah, that was an interesting experiment. Let's go back to the way it was. And boom, I guarantee you in eight months, I don't know what the timeline's going to be. It's not going to be much longer than that. Maybe it's already here. We're going to see the child poverty is back up to pre-COVID levels. Political economy. The economy does not make these people poor. Our decisions as a society, as manifested through our government, makes these people poor. And makes these people rich. Not, not each individual, but says there's going to be a cohort like this and there's going to be a cohort like that. And we decide how big these cohorts are. And everything you hear about technology or all these other things, that's just a way to obscure that fundamental decision that we're making as a society because they're afraid if we are conscious that we're making a decision about this, that you can make a conscious decision that the economy is not like the weather. And even we know we could actually do have influence over the weather long term, not on a daily basis, but long term, we have the ability to make the weather more extreme. We have the ability to change the temperature based upon what we do, but they want to make it like it's just you're born, you die. Those are irrefutable. And, and economics is like that. No, it's not. We create economics. It is done within the context of a society and a system. We decide. That's why this guy's calling up and going, you all you do is talk about politics and wanting government officials to do stuff, and you're not you know, developing you know, technology. Give me a break. Devoid reality. I'm 64. I had a good middle class job. I put 10, 20 percent of my income into my 401k. And just as Dr. Wolf says, every 47 years of my working career, the system collapses and I'm right back where I started. Thanks, Clinton, W and Trump. It's the system, stupid. Mm -hmm. There you go. Apocalypse soon. A libertarian caller will be calling in from a 408 area code today. Um, it's just staring right at me. It's color number seven. Look at poor Emma. Look at poor you Emma. You want to do it? Uh, may it? Call from 408 area code. 